and, and catchment areas related to each one. Uh, the New York City plants are, are very big. We can handle a lot of flow, up to 3.6 billion gallons a day when it rains. That's a lot, but it's not everything. And so the focus of, of, of my piece of this talk is, um, you know, what happens with that, that extra water and, and what are we doing about it? So this is a couple of graphics, 1985 uh, versus 2010, and fecal coliform levels in local waterways. And, you know, whenever I come and give a guest talk here at Columbia, I said that when I went to school here uh, and I flushed, that water went straight to the Hudson River. There was no treatment plant at the time. The, the North River plant was being built. And so if you see the Hudson River was red, uh, very high fecal coliform levels. Uh, that, that's the reason why. But we built out our treatment plants over the years. We've done a lot better. But as you can see from the 2010 graphic, there were still hot spots. Uh, also, have listed here, and this is online. We did a, a, a Centennial Harbor Survey report, 100 years of monitoring that we've done in New York City. And, and, and shows the improvements. It's a good uh, historical document. So, again, as Jim Roberts mentioned, two thirds of the system in New York City, the sewer system, is combined, meaning there's one pipe in the street that gets both storm water and sanitary water. During very heavy rains, the system just exceeds its capacity and has to relieve itself. And there are certain points throughout the city uh, where those reliefs occur. And if, if you look at the, the red dots, which are tier one, our really biggest. Uh, relief outfalls. At, at those sites, we, we discharge more than a billion gallons per year uh, of combined sewer overflow. And if you, you know, from the, the, the graphic before, you can see those are the hot spots where we, we, we discharge a lot. Pointed out Flushing Bay and Paddock Basin because we built large holding tanks uh, at those locations. Uh, very expensive. They, they do a good job, uh, but they cost a lot of money. So um, I wanted to bring this up. This is our, our capital costs, and you know, I think both Jim and Dave referred to this, we, we, we spend a lot of money on, on capital programs, all for the public good, um, but uh, as you can see from the red line, we have to borrow that money. The debt service uh, has been going up uh, for, for quite a while, starting to level off now, but about $2 billion a year uh, in, in water and sewer revenue that we collect from our, our rate payers goes to just funding that public debt on all of these, these mega projects uh, that we've been doing. So it's very expensive. Um, and so Mayor Bloomberg a couple of years ago came out with uh, you know, his program called Plan YC for Greener Greater New York. He had 15 initiatives related to improving local waterways and, and, and just trying to, to make us a more sustainable city, both uh, you know, economically and environmentally. He came up with uh, green infrastructure initiatives and initiatives six through ten uh, related to trying to just keep that, that stormwater runoff out of the sewer system. Jim um, Robert showed a couple of graphics about that, and I've got a couple here. Green infrastructure, uh, whether it's you know, local tree pit to, to catch and collect uh, and absorb rainwater, uh, or some of these other things like a green roof or a blue roof, keep that water out of the sewer system. So that it doesn't get either to a treatment plant or relieve itself uh, on very rainy days. Uh, DEP came out with its own green infrastructure program. This is also on our website. It's a little more detail about what we're doing, uh, where we're going to uh, spend resources to build these things, and partnering uh, with the, with the public. This is our estimate. We think we, over 20 years we'll save 1.5 billion dollars. By, by doing more green strategies than gray strategies. Now we're still going to build some gray where it makes sense, uh, but we're going to try to do as much green as possible. As Jim said, we use technology and we're doing a lot of cleaning, so we're trying to optimize our existing system as well. Um, and you know, we, 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 we can use some of the existing sewers for storage, and we started to do that, building stuff like inflatable dams and bending gears, and, and that's, that's helping as well. The other big thing that's helping, uh, and I don't know if this is a function of water conservation efforts in the city or just people uh, not wanting to pay larger and larger uh, water and sewer bills, but the, the water uh, usage has gone down a lot. I think Dave Warren touched on this too. Uh, back in the 1970s and 80s, uh, water usage was over 1.4 billion gallons a day. Now it's just a little over a billion. Um, and that's helped getting less flow in the sewers, and therefore more capacity, more room for wet weather flow. So that's helpful. 
We've also, this is just one last slide, at our wastewater treatment plants, even though they're all built out now, we're continuing to upgrade them. We're upgrading them to, to remove nitrogen, which is a nutrient, um, gets into local waterways, uh, and, and can cause algae growth. So we've, we've been upgrading a lot of our plants to, to remove nitrogen and, uh, and, and make them even more effective. One last thing I just wanted to point out, the EP also came out last year with our strategic plan. Uh, it's a four-year plan. It has 100 initiatives. Uh, touches on water supply stuff, water and sewer operations, wastewater treatment, and other things including customer service and, and trying to keep our rates down. So this is a document online and you guys can take a look at it. If you have any questions, you can, uh, you can forward them to us uh, either on our website or on Facebook. And, and that's pretty much it. So is there any questions? Yeah. When you look at the price increase you talked about, what impact does the reduced water consumption have on price increases? Yeah, that's a good question. The question was about uh, water, water consumption is coming down. What does it do to the price? Well, there's, there's a big fixed component to, to operating the system. Uh, so as water rates come down, uh, we still have to capture that, that, that fixed cost. And so people say, well, I'm trying to save water, but you're raising my rates. Well. Yeah, I mean, that goes hand in hand. So. Yeah. It's like the, um, the demand of water went way down. I assume uh, the strength of the wastewater, did that go up in the day? It has, yeah. Our treatment plants are sized both for flow and for load, the organic load that we get in. And so the flows have come down, um, which is, again, good for the sewer system. The plants are seeing about the historical levels of, of organic load, BOD, total suspended solids. Stay about the same. A question about the grid infrastructure and uh, one of the challenges I, I see, and I wonder if you guys have talked about it. Um, when I think about diverting runoff from the diverting services into the subsurface, um, it's easy to say, it's hard to do. I, I'm a professor, I teach the senior design right now, and I have projects and we need to do everybody wants to do something. But it's a, you know, from a civil engineering, uh, engineering it's a practically a tough thing to do. And one of the things I wondered about was how much effort is being brought into thinking of the unintended or consequences of suddenly, or not suddenly, but increasing the amount of water we're diverting into the subsurface, making unsaturated zones saturated, impacts on basements, impacts on structural, uh, the strength of soil depends very much on its water content. There's all kinds of things that are really challenging, easy to say, challenging to do in general. Uh, that, that is a great question. It, it, it is putting in green infrastructure. Um, we just didn't do it, uh, you know, without a lot of thinking involved. In fact, the guy that, that we put in charge of the program, Maggie Frigg, has been an engineer for the EP for 40 years. Uh, I think he really Jim, knows uh, the, the conditions out in the street probably better than anybody uh, in city government. And he's taking a good hard look at where green infrastructure is viable um, and where it's not. There are certainly a lot of locations where uh, because of those issues, um, and, and Maggie's, you know, been pouring through through maps, uh, you know, subsurface conditions, uh, underground utilities, uh, housing, and, and, and looking at that in a lot of detail. I, I, I think the, the approach, and you're right on top of it, we need to put you on the panel, but um, I mean, the approach that we've really tried to take is, is to develop what we call a toolbox of options. Um, because inf infiltration is not going to be the right, um, the right answer for every location. Well, there are a lot of shit, right? Zero percent being pervious and a lot of So there's that trade-off. There's that trade -off. All right. Oh, we got one more. Can you look at the, again, the wastewater treatment plan? Uh, what is happening to the sludge from the wastewater treatment plan? Because that's a source of energy you can actually use it for your own sustainable infrastructure. What are you doing about that part? So, so that the organic material that we remove from the sewage, we call sewage sludge. Uh, we've done a couple of things with it. We, we first we dumped it in the ocean many years ago. Uh, then we we land applied it for beneficial use. So we we turned it into compost or pellets that we used on land. Uh, we've, we've subsequently, the last few years, have been landfilling it because it's just so much cheaper at this point. A lot of landfill capacity has been cheaper, but 
we have looked at converting sludge to energy. We actually put out a request for proposal about a year and a half ago, trying to seek uh, companies that can do that, take that organic material as you know, a, a caloric value and turn it into energy. Uh, but the, the, the prices that we got back were just higher than landfilling. So um, it, it's just, you know, timing is tough. And uh, try, again, trying to be conscious of what the, the citizens of New York are paying for their water and sewer bills. It, we, we, we did put the request out there. We got we got a bunch of proposals from companies, but nothing as cheap as landfill. Uh, well, I'm curious, if this is all my question is, what is the cost of transportation and cost of uh, disposal? Can you give us an idea of yeah. per ton? How much yeah, right, right now we're paying $67 per ton to get past out of our sludge landfill. Yeah. That includes transportation costs. Yeah. Very, very cheap right now. So. Yeah, correct. There was also the PDS notification pilot. That's right. Uh, uh, but instead of going to methane, we've got uh, uh, the sludge to uh, fatty acids for the demand storage. So methane is not the only problem with the other chemical storage. Yeah. All right. Thanks very much, everyone.